Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. What's up, Unbroken Nation? Today's episode, I'm going to have a conversation with Mike Forrester. And I met Mike a couple of months ago after being on his podcast. And I was so moved and really impacted emotionally by his journey that I knew that I wanted him to come on and share his experience here with the Unbroken Nation. And the reason why is I connected with him in so many different ways about the way that not only we grew up through tremendous amounts of trauma, but having this massive shift in our life to put ourselves in a position to not only heal and grow and change, but to be of service. And in this episode, Mike talks about his journey to recovering from tremendous amount of narcissistic abuse, from being this borderline, dare I say, sociopath and learning this process of building resilience through vulnerability and self-love to tap into his full potential. And the conversation is really powerful today. And so as we get into this, I want you to know that One of the things I love about this conversation is how poignant Mike is and how powerful his voice is. And so I hope that you'll find the space to sit with us today because it's reminiscent in this conversation of my own experience and my own journey of going through the healing process as a man. And and I'm not saying this doesn't apply to women as well or however you identify. I don't think it matters. 
what I do think though, is that there's a lot of power in this conversation, especially if you're a man right now struggling and especially if you're a woman struggling, especially if you're anyone struggling right now to move into what's next in your life. Maybe you're sabotaging your relationship, your marriage, you're hurting your kids. You're still in this place of repeating the generational trauma. I really want you to hear Mike today because he's going to talk about what that journey has been like for him to move through it and to be on the other side. So without further ado, today's guest, Mike Forrester, and let's get into the show. What's up, Unbroken Nation? Hello, my friends. I'm Michael Unbroken, host of the Think Unbroken podcast and founder of thinkunbroken.com. And I'm honored to be your trauma coach and mentor because I believe that everyone is capable of getting unstuck, cultivating self-love, and becoming the hero of their own story. I believe that when implemented correctly, the practical tools and education you will receive from this show will help you lead an unbroken and extraordinary life. I believe that no matter what we come from, that we all have the ability to choose ourselves first, to create and manifest a powerful and grace-filled future, and love the reflection in the mirror. I believe that every day is a day to grow, learn, heal, and change. That's why I started my company, thinkunbroken.com, which is an online training and healing and personal growth platform where you get everything that I know about how to get motivated, be accountable, get out of the vortex, and become the hero of your own story through community, connection, and commitment. For more information, visit thinkunbroken.com. Please listen closely as you may learn just one thing that will help you be unbroken. And please share this episode with at least three of your friends because we all need community and connection in our healing journey. And be sure to DM me and tag me on Instagram at Michael Unbroken so that I can say hi. I just want to thank you again for being a part of this, for listening and being a member of the Unbroken Nation. Now, let's get into today's show and make the world unbroken. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Super excited to be back with you with another episode. Today, we're joined with Mike Forrester, who helps men learn life strategies to achieve confidence and self worth. One of my favorite subjects on planet earth and so incredibly important, not only necessary for women, men, but women as well and people in general. But I really love this conversation with men because it's one we're not having enough. Mike, my friend, what is going on in your world today? Doing well, my friend. Appreciate you Good. having me on. Thank you. My pleasure, my friend. It's going to be an amazing conversation. Before we jump in to create a little context for the Unbroken Nation who's listening, can you tell us a little bit about your story, your journey, and how you got to where you are today? Sure. So along the way, my mother is was paranoid schizophrenic. My father was passive. Um, and so you can imagine that makes for a really great home life for uh, learning toxic behaviors. I then got married. Um, discovered along the way that what I had experienced from my parents was love in the way that they knew how to express it, but it wasn't necessarily healthy love. And as I started dating my wife, girlfriend at the time, came across that kind of epiphany and tried pushing her away. We struggled through the beginning of our marriage because I communicated one way, she communicated a different way, and mine was yell as loud as you can. Person who's the loudest is the one that wins the argument. Continued on, we had children and uh, do that anger, that insecurity, the way that I was handling the trauma and the stuff that I had learned and how I had identified myself then played out in just a really unhealthy, um, really pathetic way as a dad. And it wasn't until I stopped, asked for help, and quit trying to pretend like I had it all together, that I was then able to heal myself. And from that place, it then made space for my wife to grow and blossom and become who she is. And for the relationship with my children to then get to a healthy, connected way. Um, just 
that I had never experienced before and honestly didn't think that I ever would. So we're now in a place where I have uh, four adult children, three daughters, one son, and two grandchildren. So I'm in a great place. Again, a place I never thought I'd be. So that's why I reach out and I encourage other men to change because we're not stuck to who we are or who we were, nor what we experienced. Man, that that's so powerful. And, and congratulations. You know, I look at my life when I was in rock bottom, destroying every relationship, destroying family, destroying community. Like uh, it's an analogy I used when I wrote my book. I said, it's like standing inside of a house that you've set on fire while you're holding the matches. Right. And you're like, yeah. why is everything burning down? Oh, I don't know. And so, you know, I, a huge testimony to you in that mission. And, you know, here's what I think is so interesting, Mike. People hear things like this and they go, well, you did that, but my life's different. And I go, I don't think it's necessarily that your life is different. It's about the choices and the decisions that you make. You know, one of the things that I think happens in our journey is we sacrifice so much of ourselves, our people, our families to try to gain, you know, the love mm -hmm. of, of our parents to get approval from people. What, what has that been like for you? Because I know that's a part of your journey. That was 100% a part of my journey. And I didn't understand it at the time. That was the problem. And so as I'm going through, I'm obviously wanting my parents' love, approval, you know, respect, and I'm not able to get it. And so I just treated my wife like cannon fodder. And so I would literally throw her under the bus in arguments and conversations, decisions, behavior, even to where I'm looking to just get, you know, mom and dad to say, Hey, I love you. You're worthwhile. You're not the mistake we told you, you know, to, to have them change their decision and the way that they saw me. Um, and it never came because they weren't in a place to give it, you know, they were hurt themselves. And when you're in a place of, of hurt, you can't give that. And so it was being fortunate enough to have that explained to me, to understand it and work through it. And for my wife to be forgiving, because I mean, all intents and purposes, man, she bore the brunt of me healing at a time I didn't understand I needed healing. I knew I wasn't where I wanted to be, but I didn't understand why. And so that for me is why community is so important is the, the sights, you know, somebody being able to speak into you and tell you, Hey, you're sacrificing your wife. You're sacrificing yourself. You're doing this without that. I never would have gotten to that point where I was able to um, elevate and care for my wife as she deserved and needed without trying to get my parents to approve and acknowledge me. So it took a long time, but man, it, it was worthwhile a hundred times over. So, um, yeah. You know, one of the things I think is so like literally fascinating about that concept and that journey is that that thing we're vying for, we also simultaneously push away. Right. It's yeah. almost like this part of ourselves where because of the limiting beliefs that we've put into our lives as an adult, we sit here in it and it's like, I want this thing, but I don't deserve this thing. And, you know, there's so much context to the what I call the chaos of it all. How much did the way that you were talking to yourself play a role in the impact of your relationships and your family with your wife, with your friends and, and most importantly, with yourself? Dude, it was foundational. Um, it totally guided everything I did, whether it was personal or business. It was, it was at the, the driving force of everything. Understand, um, because my parents, you know, said, Hey, you're a mistake. We didn't intend for you. You know, we, we don't want you. That sets a behavior. It also, when, you know, like you're struggling in school, you don't find out until you're 40 years old that it's dyslexia, you know, there's a struggle in identity there as well, because you're not fitting in at school. Continue that forward to where, you know, I'm, I'm trying to fit in at work and I'm still struggling there. It's one of those that at that time I had a victim mindset. I thought things were 
always against me. Didn't matter what it was. The problem was I'm reinforcing that belief. And so when I'm seeing something happen, if it's having a negative uh, result, that just reinf reinforce the belief that, yes, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not the right guy for this. I'm not um, worthwhile. You know, all those messages that we'll tell ourselves, those things were just reinforced and became like concrete in my mind. And it was, it was so pervasive that I even poured over into my children. You know, you're working to parent your children. And from where you're at is how you're going to, you know, almost lay on that pattern. Um, I, I taught them how to play small because one of my things was I was always in the belief that if I, if something failed, that made me a failure. And so you can imagine how small I played in life when I'm working to not fail. I never took chances and I imprinted that belief into my children so strongly that, I mean, even today it's something that we're working on to get them to where, give it a chance, you know, um, you just go for it, give it a try. So, I mean, it's, it's something that that's foundational, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that you've kind of switched the mindset around it because, you know, I, I find this so frequently in my own life. Fear is everywhere, man. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know of a moment in my life that I'm not faced with a tremendous amount of fear. Am I doing this right? Am I showing up? Am, am I limiting myself? Am I trying as hard as I can? Am I, am I, am I, am I, right? And then those are internal fears. And then there's the fears of the world. Will I be rejected? Will I be judged? Will people like it? Will they not? Will they buy it? Will they show up? That thing starts to happen. And then all the, you know, the snowball effect of it. And I found that the number one way that I've been able to combat fear in my life is to do it anyway, yeah. right? Because ultimately at the end of the day, you're, you're going to either prove or disprove the hypothesis that you're going to fail or win. Like there's no other way to do it. And it, it's insane to me that we can become so stagnant because our mind allows us to be when all we are is like, we're, we're literally one action away. But here's, what's fascinating to me about this is I look at this and I go, so much of this is a repeat of the patterns that my parents put in place. You know, it was fear about money, fear about success, fear about love, fear about human connection, right? And you talk about this idea of repeating patterns. Everyone in my life used to scream. And so that was the only way I knew how to communicate. Talk to me about, and I know this is a big part of what you help people understand, Talk to me about not only understanding and identifying the parental patterns that we bring into our lives, but how you reframe those, change those, break those, and start to move forward. I think the one thing to understand is that it's like they're going to continue coming at us, right? We have to heal ourselves. And once we've got that, that base to build from, we can look back at stuff. I didn't understand why I was always anxious when they're, you know, like the fridge wasn't full, there wasn't food in the pantry, you know, keeping it fully stocked. And same thing with the freezer, you know, when those things were empty, or there was space, it set off a, an insecure feeling inside of me. And it wasn't until I was, you know, on my journey, and able to see things differently, that I was then looking back at my childhood going, okay, mom and dad used to put a chain and a lock around the fridge and they controlled when we could eat and what we could eat. From that, it was then one of those of, I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of food. It was always accessible. Didn't matter what it was, but it just needed to be filled. The most ridiculous part of it was that I had a freezer that was full. And I kept it filled for five years. Now, I don't know about you, but beef that's been in the freezer for five years is definitely not what you want to be eating or serving to anybody. But the fact that there was stuff there and that it was full, that gave me that secure feeling, that, that completeness. And I've had that pop up 
you know, in driving through the desert and going, why do I hate the desert? I've not lost an arm. I've not been lost in the desert. There wasn't anything really clearly or apparent problem that was there. But in looking back at it, my wife was able to help me see, hey, your dad used to say um, he could go into the desert with a knife. You'd never find him and he'd fully survive. Okay, right there is separation, right? Being abandoned. My mother, because she was paranoid schizophrenic and we grew up in duplexes, didn't want anybody to necessarily hear her. So she would have my dad put us all in the car, drive out to the desert, and she would berate us, you know, just tear us up one side and down the other. Well, those are not two things that are going to nurture a great feeling. And so once I was aware of that stuff, I could then separate the events from the place and go, the desert isn't a bad place. It's I had bad stuff happen there. And that was kind of solely placed on those people. And so I was able to be in the desert with my wife, my friends, and have a great time because I didn't have that kind of, uh, you know, like a hidden issue. It was separated. It was now visible and known and I could work through it. Um, you know, like even as an adult, there were times where I didn't have money. And like you talked about, I had limiting beliefs around money because my parents, you know, displayed those really vividly. They acted it out. Well, when I was an adult and my wife and I had children, we didn't have money to pay the bills. And so it wasn't uncommon at that time to have a utility truck come, come around and it's, you know, disconnecting our services. Even as an adult, dude, years later, I would see a utility truck and I would go high anxiety because I'm thinking, did I pay the bill? Didn't I pay the bill? I would run downstairs, Michael, get on the computer, check the utilities and, and see nine times out of 10 it's paid or, you know, the other part is, Hey, you've still got two weeks to go and you're good. But it was that, that memory, that attachment that was still playing out in my current day, um, that I had to just really cut the tie, be aware of it and move on from there. Hey, Unbroken Nation, a quick pause in today's episode to tell you about the brand new Think Unbroken app. That's right. I just released a brand new app in the App Store that you can take the first course in the Think Unbroken curriculum, the five keys to healing trauma. It's a seven day course for free. All you have to do is go into your app store right now. You can pause this video and search Think Unbroken. That's on both Apple and Android. And you can take the Think Unbroken Five Keys to Healing Trauma, seven-day course for free. This is daily coaching from me. It's daily activities, daily check-ins. I built this course in this app specifically to bring huge value to you in your life, where you're at, and what you're trying to do, and going next and becoming the hero of your own story. So check out the App Store again, Apple and Android. Just simply search Think Unbroken, and you will see the Think Unbroken app. And until next time, my friend, be unbroken. Yeah. And so much. And, and I relate to that. You know, I remember being in my, my mid twenties and, and borrowing money to pay my rent. Right. Like, and being in this place where, you know, this hilarious story comes to mind where talking about learned behaviors, when I saw people buy a car in my life as a kid, it was always at like a buy here, pay here place. Right. Or you'd get some terrible beater car off the you know side of the street or whatever. And so when I'm 18 years old, the only thing that I've ever known is go to a buy here, pay here place. And this is going to sound insane, but it's 100% true. When I'm 18 years old, because I don't know and I hadn't been educated and no one taught me, I go to a buy here, pay here place and I get a car with a 26% interest mm. rate at 18 years old. I've never had a credit card. I've never had a loan. I knew nothing about this. And then for years, I drove that car and people were like, that's insane. I'm like, wait, there's another option. And so I think so much of this as you're in this thing of breaking patterns and understanding behaviors is you really, and I teach this to my clients all the time, you have to understand to get to where you want to go, 
You have to understand how you got to where you are. And so that those informed behaviors, those patterns, those things that happen, like they, they happen and they're in your life and you have to start to make meaning of them and educate yourself around them and, and start to heal through them. And now I'm like, I would never get a car with 20% interest rate, 26% interest rate, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the things I'm curious about, and I think would be very beneficial, especially for the Unbroken Nation today, is, is talk about the journey of the moment, maybe not even the moment, but the moments that mm -hmm. led up to this place where you were like, I got to get my shit together. Because I think that a lot of us have these, these, these experiences and, and often don't pay attention to them until it's too late. And so what was that journey like for you? Man, great question. And it, it honestly was a buildup, Michael. It was from one of those of, you talked about doing what you know to do. Man, I was, I was living that out. The problem was I wasn't satisfied. And if I'm in control of things and I'm doing so well, why am I in a place that I'm not satisfied? And for me, like that low self-worth, that lack of confidence and, and even respect for myself, man, that just put me in a place where asking for help was not something that came easy. So I had a whole lot of pride, but it wasn't pride as in elevating. It was pride again in playing small and playing safe. Um, and so as I'm finally reaching that point of being fed up with it, I saw a couple guys at work that in seeing how they're relating with their wives and their children, and they're talking about their life, it's like, that's where I want to be. So I knew the destination that I wanted to be. I just didn't know how to make the transition and get there. So I started asking them for help. And it was from that point of asking for help and, and taking that first step that the rest of them came easier, not easy, but easier. And so that was where I really started asking questions, taking it in, processing it, and trying to work through the, the discrepancy of this is how I've acted. This is how I should be acting and thinking and trying to close that gap. It didn't, it didn't come quickly. Um, I was used to manipulating. And so my wife had learned that, yes, I would start making changes, but those changes were based in me trying to get a reaction. And so once I finally got to the point where I was broken and genuinely wanted to heal and get help, it then took time to go about that and have my, my wife and children trust that fact. You know, they've become used to the fact dad's going to go. He's going to have an experience, going to come back, change for a bit, and then we're right back into it. You know, um, it it was one of those I became like my own worst enemy because of the way I behaved in the beginning. But um, those even those steps at that time still helped me to learn Um you know, like behaviors, thought processes, which I could pull from later. I just wasn't doing it in the best way. Um, case in point, I'd listened to a podcast. The guy that was speaking was like, I get away with my wife for four days. We go on a retreat. I ask her these 10 questions and we just have an amazing time. Who doesn't want that? You know, that's absolutely what I want. But the problem in the way it played out was we got away. I asked her these questions. Keep in mind, I'm still insecure about, about myself and about our relationship and everything around me. When she starts trusting to give honest answers, I'm defending myself. I'm saying, yeah, but this. So in the process, I'm discrediting what she's sharing and saying, no, that doesn't matter. That is not how you build trust. Fortunately, um, she understood that I kept working on it. And from that, that's now a pattern that, you know, we play into and I'm not at the point anymore where, Hey, you know, that's not true. That's invalid. I understand what she says. It still doesn't always, it's not always comfortable, but what she shares is her perspective. And I need that in a relationship.
Yeah. I mean, that that's so powerful. And there, I mean, we could dive into all of that so much depth, you know, a couple of things come to mind. One is, is recognizing and understanding that sometimes we are manipulative and, and sometimes that's ingrained in us, right? Mm -hmm. I remember learning how to be manipulative from a very young age, it became a defensive mechanism. It became safety. This is something I don't think people talk about. They look at people with behaviors who are in this fashion and they say, oh, they're a narcissist, right? And I go, maybe, but maybe also it was this inherent trait that was groomed and grown in them so that they could survive not only in their home, but in society that then carried over that no longer served them that became the way that they communicate. That's what I think is really interesting about this, Mike, because I remember these times of being a kid watching my mother, my stepfather manipulate me, my siblings and, and situations and scenarios that we were in. And then me in return doing that as safety and survival, I became an amazing liar, dude, like the best of all time. Like I could, I, I probably top 10 all time. And that helped me be in this position where it was survival in the streets. It was survival when I was selling drugs. It was survival in school. And then it served me until it didn't. And that's the thing I think people miss out on is that you come to this recognition where you're looking at your life and you're going, oh my God, I'm trying to control everything, I'm trying to manipulate everything. I'm trying to step into this in a way that gives me safety, gives me the parameter to have security, even though like, here's what's really fucked up about it. You know, like it's not right, but it's so ingrained in you that you can't remove yourself from it until you start to heal around it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really appreciate you bringing that up. The other part of it that I think is really fascinating that I would love for you to go a little deeper into is talking about giving yourself grace to allow the thoughts and emotions that your wife had to mm -hmm. be that and not control it. Because that to me is is singularly one of the most difficult things in the healing journey to recognize that other people's truths are not in your control. Yeah. And, and for me, that was probably one of the hardest things was like giving myself grace, giving myself forgiveness. Um, it's still something that I'm continuing to work on. The thing is I had, I had created this pattern, the way I behaved. When, when you begin to see somebody repeatedly act in a, in a specific manner, what are you expecting? You're expecting exactly what you've seen. And when it's something different, it's like, when is the other shoe going to drop? Whether we're thinking that out loud or not, that's kind of our expectation. And so my wife was the first one to really believe that this was a genuine change when it came about. But for my children, man, I had, I had been verbally abusive, you know? And so they're, they're less, less open to trusting because they've been so hurt, right? My wife had time where it's like, she wasn't with me. So she had time to understand who she was and, and see outside of that. My children have known me ever since they were born. So that's all their life has entailed. Um, you know, it's one of being as consistent as you can when you slide back going, okay, this is something that I, ha I am continuing to work through and becoming the new me because as much as you want other people to trust yourself, you're still setting that pattern. You're still creating, um, just like you're talk, we've talked about new pathways, new thoughts, that stuff is still being laid out. Who I wanted to be when I first started asking questions was not who, like I want to be, um, going down the road, right? Things are going to change just as goals change when we move along who we want to be and, and what we want to embody is going to change too. So you've got to just remember, this is a change from who you've been. You're, you're not going to have it come overnight. You're undoing years of training, years of patterning, right? If you look at your parents, 
your parents learned their behavior for somebody, their parents. So your grandparents, whether, whether we're seeing it um, day in and day out, that is usually like a generational thing that's been passed along. And that's where being these change makers, these chain breakers, it's vital that we start with us, give ourselves grace, give ourselves the forgiveness, allow our, our spouse and our children to also have that, that grace to trust and learn to expect us to be on this path that we're on. But it's like, we're messing with the, with the, the process, the path that's been set out and it doesn't happen overnight, but I'll tell you straight out, it is the best thing you can do because again, you know, do you want your children to grow up with the same things that you received? Most times, no. I mean, there's some things that came from my parents that it's like, that was great. Hey, cool. But the rest of the stuff, no, there's a reason why I have trauma, childhood trauma that I, I work through. I don't want my children having to go through that, nor do I want my grandchildren. Because if you look at how it plays out, man, I, I don't want that being the legacy that I leave the, the heritage, you know, that's known for my family. So, um, yeah, just give yourself space as you're changing to actually change. And when you don't stay with that pattern, just let it go because the more you get fixated and frustrated with it, the longer, the more likely you are to continue that pattern and you don't get back to the place you want to be where you're in that healthy spot. So, Give yourself the grace. Did you know that recent studies show that CBD has incredible benefits for helping with physical pain? I have and suffer from chronic pain. I've mentioned it before. And with NW Recovery's Lavender Eucalyptus Salve, I have that pain dissipate like nothing else I've ever tried. I love NW Recovery not only because their products are non-psychoactive, which is really important to me, but also because they are created by Navy SEALs. So thank you so much for your service. If you're interested and you want to learn more about NW Recovery's CBD balm of lavender eucalyptus, then check out nw-recovery.com and use the keyword unbroken to save 20% on your first order. Again, that's nw-recovery.com and use the keyword unbroken to save 20% on your order. Yeah, I, I love that. And, and very well said. And in this process, you're, there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be failure. There's going to be, oh, I can't believe I fucking did that again. Like it's going to happen. Like I promise you, as much as I know the sun will rise tomorrow, that will happen. And the thing that I always leverage is, can I look at it as data and not beat myself up about it. Because look, beating yourself up about it is not going to change the situation as much as you want it to, as much as you think smashing your own head into the wall is going to fix the problem, it's not. And the other thing that I try to measure is, can I create this huge gap in time of when I repeat that behavior? Mm -hmm. You know, because I think that becomes a really interesting measurement. Not necessarily like I'm counting the days, but I'm going, it's been seven months since I did that thing. Okay, now can I make it seven years, right? I think right. change is an evolution, right? But in that process, people always say, well, two steps forward, one step back. I think it's just inevitable. It's a part of this journey. Mike, you know, I think one of the things fascinating in this is like as being a man is looking at the social construct of what it means to be a man, to, to have a manhood that is engulfed in trauma and try to figure out like who you are and how you're supposed to be. What what do you and I don't think I've ever asked anyone this question before, but I'm really curious. And so if it catches you off guard, I understand why. What does it actually mean to you to be a man? That is a multifaceted question, my friend, because it's not just like one area. Like I can't just say, hey, I've got to be machismo and you know, stand in this space who I am to my children is different than who I am to my wife, to my coworkers, to my friends, and even to myself. Um, you know, it's, it's one of, we really need to understand who we are to then understand how we're going to show up for different people. 
for me, it's being compassionate and understanding, right? I'm the, the dad to three daughters and one son. Their needs are different. And so how I interact with each of them is, is unique. I need to give them space and meet them how they need me to show up. My wife, sometimes she just needs me to listen <laughs> and not fix. I need to be able to ask questions to get clarification. Are you looking for me to fix something? Are you looking for me to step in? Do you just need, you know, like a sounding board? It's it's going to be different. And I think for each guy, it's honestly going to be different how we show up, right? Michael, how you show up is different than how I'm showing up. We've had great conversations on what's going on in our life and where we're going. And I think that's a uniqueness that we can bring. Um, like, I don't come from the side of um, trying to, oh, I, I protect my wife and family, but I don't bring that overbearing, like that negative side of it anymore. You can have a, a behavior or, or like an aspect that you can carry positive or negative. I was wanting to protect my family, but in anger, it doesn't play out. From love, I can do it a different way and show up to still allow them to grow and be them and come alongside of them. But as far as being a man, it's oftentimes just stepping into stuff that's uncomfortable and admitting it and walking that journey. You know, it's like I come with love, I come with compassion, I come with as, as much strength as I can and, uh, and the courage to just try it. And I think that's a big, a big piece is, you know, showing up with courage, even when we don't know the answer, but being vulnerable enough to say, Hey, I don't know exactly how this is going to go, but if you're willing to go through this with me, then let's go for it. And I don't think anybody's honestly expecting us to have all the answers, you know, because that kind of takes it away where it's like, why don't I measure up to you? So being genuine, authentic, vulnerable, um, I think is something we as guys need to do more, but from a place of love, from a place of, of strength, not um, overbearing or controlling, manipulative like I was before. Yeah, I have a lot of appreciation for that. I think about often this idea that we measure ourselves up against other people. And the only thing I ever try to measure myself against is myself. And that's played huge dividends in my life. And that doesn't mean I don't have markers of people who are like a step ahead of me. And I go, cool, they did it. That may be the way that I go. And then I'll find out eh, that wasn't it. But you know, the the societal idea of like a man means you got to watch the game and have a lot of sex with strange women and drink beer. I'm like, eh, is that true? Is that true? What does that really mean? And so creating this social change in your own life first by proxy will impact the world because I'm with you, man. Like you love is this interesting concept to me, right? Because I look at, I go, when I was a child, non-existent, whatever that word was, I have no idea what the fuck that meant. You would hear it. You would see it on movies. I'd be like, oh, that love is this or that. And then you kind of go, oh, wait, I have no idea. And as an adult, it's like, how do I cultivate that? Right. And, and I kind of narrow it down into this, be a good person, do good things that, that to me feels very much like a definition of love. And so I think when you carry that while also understanding vulnerability plays this interesting role, you know, I think men, and I'll speak for myself when I stepped into vulnerability initially, and I was like, I need help. And I was looking at my life from this rock bottom moment at 26 years old and measuring my future and going, I'm going to fucking die in two years if I don't fix something. Mm -hmm. Asking for help became not only simultaneously the most vulnerable thing that I've ever done, but more importantly, it became the most empowering thing that I've ever done. And filtering that through this scope of I'm willing to be vulnerable because I'm going to die. That's how I look at it, right? I go, if I'm not vulnerable, I'm going to die. I apply that to a lot of situations, right? And that's become very beneficial. What what if any tool, because I, I think I want to try to, I don't think I know, I want to try to make this a little bit more practical for people listening, men, women, however you identify, I don't think it matters. What, what can someone do 
right now to be able to tap into love, to vulnerability, to try to move themselves forward into a healing journey? Great question. I would say the first thing we're going to go back to this is give grace. You did not end up where you are today just, you know, accidentally. It's not overnight. There's been patterning. There's been training that's gone on. Understand where you are. That's vital. Look at, hey, do I have anger issues? Do I have issues with asking for help? You know, where are these points that I'm struggling with? Conversely, man, look at where you're strong. What do you do well? What do you hear people say? Hey, I love this about you. I'm I'm a nerd. I love assessments. So like DISC, Myers-Briggs, they helped me figure out what my personality was, like to give me insight on myself. So if you're if that's your bent, look at some personality tests, figure out um, where do you operate from? I think understanding also, do, do you accept and process books better, like through reading, or is it through listening to podcasts, or is it conversations? Understand how you take in information and look for stuff that people are saying, hey, this is a great book that got me to this point. You know, for me, Boundaries was one of the first books that was groundbreaking for me. And it was also one of the hardest ones because I needed to put up a security area to protect myself and my family from my parents and their behaviors. Um, again, like we talked about throwing my wife under the bus, that helped me to stop that behavior or at least to lessen it, uh, particularly in the beginning. But I came to protect her and my family through that, that book. Um, you know, and just understanding where you want to get, I think community with guys, I know for me, I played small. I looked for small groups, uh, where, you know, it wasn't going to be an intimidating environment, but I was also playing a chameleon looking for groups where the men are healthy. They're talking, they're vulnerable, even if it's just one guy that you meet with. Find somebody who's in a different place in the road down from where you are. That's where you want to get to that can give you input. And then I think one of the hardest things to do is to be quiet and to just take notes, listen, whatever you need to do, hear what, what that person has to say, because often our perspective is skewed and we need somebody on the outside to tell us that, um, you know, to give us that perspective without the taint from from our parents and, and the trauma that we've gone through. So, um, but yeah, give yourself grace. I mean, you're you're learning and and discovering who you are, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a a process. It's not gonna happen just overnight. Getting to where we are didn't happen overnight. So, give yourself the time. Yeah, I love that. I love it. And I say often, I believe, and I don't think there's any way to really prove this, but I believe it takes you as long to get healthy as it did for you to be unhealthy. And so, you know, I look at my journey, I go, shit, man, I got like another 40 years to go. Right. And so, you know, it, it is very much about grace. It's about patience. It's about allotting yourself the space to know you're going to make mistakes, to connect mm -hmm. with other human beings and to ultimately just trust that you're making the right decisions. Mike, this has been an incredible conversation, my friend, and I would love to go deeper. But for the sake of time, before I ask you my last question, can you tell everyone where they can find you? Definitely. And thank you for having me. So the best place to find me is at highcoachmike.com, H-I-C-O-A-C-H-M-I-K-E.com. And you can find me at highcoachmike on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And if you like what you're hearing, um, you can also find me on my podcast, Living Fearless Today, where you can find other men who are going through the same journey you might be going through that you can relate with. And Michael and I have like the same heart, the same desire to see people healed because we don't want to see this pattern continued. So powerful, my friend. And thank you so much for being here. 
Mike, my last question, what does it mean to you to be unbroken? To be unbroken means to keep putting my foot forward for the next step, to, to have the courage, the confidence, the strength, not, not to be like, hey, I've fully got this, but to just to be, I'm open to continuing moving forward, to continue doing my best. And from that, you're going to find that you encourage the people around you. For me, as I imperfectly um, do stuff, it, again, like I talked about earlier, gives my children space and almost a, like a permission to try their um, best and to move forward instead of being afraid of, you know, that, that failing, making them a failure. So for me, it's just continuing to move forward the best I can powerful, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Unbroken Nation, thank you for listening. Please, as usual, like, subscribe, leave a review, tell a friend, and until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see ya. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that Unbroken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like, comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.